Silvius Traders Lounge in partnership with Scope Markets welcome you to yet another webinar where we learn, trade and profit. We shall be giving you trading insights on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, risk management and trading psychology. Today's guest is Stephanie Kammerman and our theme is how to trade profitably for decades and get ahead of dark pools. All right, uh, thank you all for joining in today's webinar. We will do the introduction and then Stephanie's bio and then we'll get started. Stephanie Kammerman's vast experience over the past three decades in the trading industry has earned her recognition and the nickname The Stock Whisperer. She is also the author of the book Dark Pool Secrets, as seen on Fox Business News, Fox News, MSNBC, and CNBC. She is recognized for spotting the last 17 corrections long before they happened by calling them out on social media. Currently, Ms. Kammerman runs a live online trading room, the Java Pit, where she teaches her traders how to trade stocks, options, and futures using the dark pool prints. Stephanie Whispers have achieved a documented 90% success rate over the past five years. In her brand new book, Dark Pool Secrets, she teaches you how, to, how she does it along with how the market is manipulated and how to profit off it. Out of huge demand, she developed a dark pool app where traders and investors can follow her dark pool trade recommendations pushed out to their smart devices. Born and raised in New York, Stephanie has become a highly sought after public speaker and trading coach. She has delivered powerful speeches at countless money show and traders expos and webinars across the country. Stephanie has also toured across Canada for three years with Larry Berman, ETF Capital Management Portfolio Manager and host of Berman's Call, BNN TV. So welcome Stephanie, it's an honor to have you back on the lounge. And we will get started by you sharing with us your trading history, uh, starting out at a prop firm, how the journey has been, and why you rightfully so referred to yourself as the stock whisperer. Wow, thank you, Sylvia. That was a, an amazing introduction, and it is so great to be back here uh, once again, um, especially in these crazy times. Um, you know, I'm so lucky and fortunate to have this as my career choice right now. You know, I haven't left my house in, you know, in months and I'm still working, still doing what I normally do. And um, just to give you a little background on myself, I, I did not go to college to study the stock market, economics. I, I was a psychology major and I pretty much got lucky. I was at the right place at the right time. But the most important thing is I learned how to trade from successful traders. You know, I wrote a book, as you know, um, you can read my book, it's a great book, but reading a book is not going to teach you how to trade. You know, the only way for you to really master anything in life is to watch somebody doing it live successfully and teaching you step by step. So I was very fortunate. Um, I was just at the right place at the right time. I was an assistant to one of the best traders at the largest prop firm, Schoenfeld Securities in New York. And I sat in the million dollar room, but the secret is this, you know, the secret is they sat me in front of a computer called an instant machine, which is the dark pool liquidation computer. I got to see where all the big guys were loaded to buy and sell. And if you follow Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan and Barclays, guess what? You're going to do very well. These are the guys that, that are moving the market. All right. So to a novice trader, how can you define what dark pools are given your mention of the book? And how have you managed to become a profitable trader, you know, by following the dark pools? And then you can like tell us in details what your book entails. Sure. So I know a lot of people think the dark pools are, you know, a, ominous, right? What is that? And in fact, nobody knew what they were. In 2013, I opened up a Twitter account and I started posting about the dark pool. I was like, what is that? And people thought I was psychic. I was calling corrections. I was calling major moves. And really, again, this is the only way that I learned how to trade. I was 24 years old when I started. Um, so I've been doing this a really long time. And, and what it is, is it's just this alternative exchange 
where the big guys do all their trades. These are the guys that have billions of dollars and they're moving the market, not the news. It's these guys. When they buy, the market goes up. When they sell, the market goes down. And the reason they do their trades in this alternative exchange, the dark pool, is they don't have to show us one single share that's being bought or sold until their entire order is filled. So they're able to sell billions of dollars without moving the market down. In fact, that's pretty much how I've called 17 out of 17 corrections in a row on social media. There's a specific pattern, and I share it in my book, of how they sell. In fact, these orders aren't even shown to the public until 24 hours later. So they're literally selling billions of dollars um, without showing their hand. But we can see what they're doing. There are ways we can. Again, um, you just have to have the right software and you have to understand um, how the dark pool works. And this is what I teach. I teach this to anybody. I mean, you don't need a degree in, in college. I, I could teach it to, to you guys today. You know, it's really not, not a difficult thing. Um, but what they do is they sell massive amounts um, of the SPY, the S&P 500, the Russell and the Qs. Uh, the NASDAQ ETFs all across the board. There are delayed trades coming in for a couple of days and it gets really, really heavy. And then we're going to have a correction. So it's, you know, you watch TV and, you know, when they're telling you to buy on TV, you, you should, probably should be selling. When they're telling you to sell on TV, like they were selling all the time, they're telling you to sell on TV. I see the dark pool buying. And when they're saying buy, I see the dark pool selling. You know, it's almost as if they need a sucker on the other side of the trade. And I hate to say this, but it happens every single day. I see them pumping something and I see them selling it um, in the dark pool. So this is why you'll see behind me, I, I've, I haven't put the TV on in like a year, over a year. I refuse to watch it. I just follow the tape. Again, these, this is where um, the big guys are doing their orders. And you know, we, we see it every single day. Right. So in following the tape, more of a traditional way of trading, was that something that you learned from the people who taught you or is it something that you came to discover by yourself? You know? Yeah, so I learned a lot from these guys. I mean, this is back in 1994, right? But I've learned a lot on my own since then following patterns. But yeah, they, they always told me to, to follow the big guy, right? He's got billions of dollars and you wanna be on the same side of the trade. So we see these big trades coming in and they're big blocks, let's say of, um, it could be gold right now. We have massive trades coming in on gold right now and Japan. And um, as long as we stay above the prints, we go long. And the prints are trades that have already been executed and we follow these huge blocks. As long as we stay above, we go long. And if, if the price goes below that print, we go short. There's no thinking. You know, I mean, how many of you have ever been um, in the wrong trade and you knew it, right? You, you bought a stock and it wasn't going in your direction. And what, like, how did you feel? What did you do? Well, most people freeze up. A lot of people add on to those trades um, in the wrong direction, putting their ego, putting all of their emotions into it. The way I trade, there's no emotion. It's purely mathematical. You're on the right side or you're on the wrong side. Now it's okay, like Sylvia, if, if you get into a trade, you think they're buying, we're above the prints, everything looks good and, and tomorrow we wake up and we're below it, guess what? I'm getting out and I'm going short. So I trade options which um, gives me a huge benefit to trading because I don't even need to know the direction when you trade options. Um, I teach my traders how to put on uh, a, a position called a strangle where we go out of the money on calls and out of the money on puts. And we don't even have to know the direction. We know a big move is coming. When these, buy, when these big guys are coming in with billions of dollars, right? All we have to know is a big move is gonna happen. And I've done a lot of webinars um, on YouTube that you can watch where I teach you how to do this. Yeah, it's fantastic. All right, so please tell us like um, the importance of your rule-based trading because you know, zero emotions, 
you know what to do yeah so and how you have managed to stay ahead of the market makers and the hfts the high frequency trading firms yeah, so there's really no market makers anymore actually that's a scary part yeah no nobody's responsible to make a market and that's why we have flash crashes because nobody has to take the other side of the trade and you know we saw this recently when we had the big crash in february you know we were short and it was like you wake up in the morning right wake up in the morning and you're so excited that you're on the right side of the market and you know it's not great when the market crashes but when you're short we're traders we make money on the way up we make money on the way down coming in though okay and there's nobody to take the other side of your trade it's like you're right but try to get out of your position you know with the options the spreads open very wide and there was really nobody to sell them to yeah so it's kind of crazy um but that's that's the market in truth you know when i first started there were market makers you know goldman sachs was responsible to take the other side of that trade um things have changed a lot it's gotten thinner the market so it's really really important that you understand how it works um, and that you you trade only liquid liquid stocks liquid options this is a big mistake that a lot of new traders make they trade these crazy, you know, biotech stocks or stuff that's high flying that has very little volume. My secret is volume. And, and that's how I've stayed in this game for so long. I don't trade anything that is um, um, risky, right? I stick with uh, big names and I stick with stuff where there's volume. So, but the key thing is, is really discipline. Again, like I said before, rules. I never go to sleep on the wrong side of the tape. Never, you know, and, and again, that's a big mistake. People know they shouldn't be in a trade and they stay in it hoping, right? Praying mm -hmm. it's going to come back, praying they're right. Who cares? Just get out, take a loss. Losses are healthy. All right. People don't like to lose. Therefore they don't exit out a losing trade. And that is what buries most people. You know, I've been training people, Sylvia, for like 26 years now. And I happily take my losses. They're small. That's my best trade of the week is the one I only lost 10 cents on. Even if I made $5 on this trade and $3 on that or 500% ROI, I always tell my traders, this is my best, my best trade this week. I took a small loss. I, I was on the wrong side, you know, and I reversed. And that's, that's the secret right there because one trade will erase all of your good trades. You know, one bad trade can erase everything that you did. And, and that's pretty much the biggest downfall that uh, a lot of traders do. All right, and maybe you can tell us the advantages of having a trading room and coaching people as you do, you know, for the last 26 years or so. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, this is really how I started out. When I first um, was given my trading account back in 96, um, I was doing very, very well. And um, I was running a trading desk. And what I learned back then was that if I trained all the new traders that came in, my system had to find that perfect setup. Um, they would call out trades all day long. Hey, Steph, look at this. This fits your system. What do you think about this stuff? And so instead of finding like five great trades, I had 30 great trades. And, you know, that, that's the secret is surrounding yourself with amazing traders, even if I have to train them. So now I run this online trading room and I have, you know, over 400 people in there right now. And I've trained them personally. Personally, that is the secret because I know that they're looking for the right thing. They've been trained properly. Now I have 800 eyes looking for perfect setups, calling out the prints. I, look, I miss a lot of things during the day. I mean, I'm here. I don't ever leave my desk and I trade live every day. I post all my trades in an alert tab so my traders can follow along and learn. And then eventually they're calling out amazing trades and I'm following them and it just keeps lifting and elevating our trading room really pretty much to the next level. And it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, these people are like, they're my family. I spend 12 hours a day with them, sometimes more. Uh, we go on vacations together. Uh, you know, it's sad because now we really can't see each other, but we always have get togethers every couple of months. I fly all over the country to, to see them, to meet them. 
Um, and it's been like, you know, a, a trading family. It's, it's, it's lonely. You know, you're trading from home. It's just you and your computer. If you're not in a trading room, you're, you could be your own worst enemy. You know, you're sitting there, you're watching the screen. Maybe you, you're in a trade. Nobody knows you're in this trade. So what happens when it goes against you? Usually you stay in it. But when you're in a room, it makes you accountable. Like we know you're in that trade. So what are you going to do, John, right? John, it's below the prints. We need to go short. You know, that's what I do all day, all day long. I make sure that my traders are following the rules. They're going with the trend. They're going with the prints. They're following the dark pool. And, and I'm accountable because all my trades are up there for them to see. So I have to follow the rules. So it actually helps me uh, tremendously knowing that there are all these people watching me and it makes me really stay true to, to myself. Oh and, my uh, and, and one more thing though that I have to add is this. I've become a better trader. You know, I, I did options five years ago. I ventured into options. Why? Because of my traders in my room. I learn things from them. I develop my own unique style, but it's because of them that I've become a much better trader. So it works both ways. Really love right, it. We'll talk, about, we'll talk about how people can join your trading room if they're interested after you know, we do the Q&A. So maybe you can go right ahead to your presentation and then we get to learn a few things from how you normally conduct your practical trading. Okay, great. I'm just going to take you through my morning. So the most important thing um, is my block trade indicator. This is Charles Schwab. It's um, seven o'clock in the morning. So we're not going to see too much activity. I have it set on um, right here, pre-market activity. I have it set, oops, you can see I'm drawing on here. Small, small share size to see what's happening in the morning. Yeah, where is their action? Um, where are, where is there going to be interest today? So we do day trading and we do overnight momentum swing trading. We do both, but for day trading, my number one rule is that stocks need to have at least 100,000 shares pre-market activity. That means it, it has to trade before the market's opened. Um, so it's really, really early right now. So like for Bank of America, it's only trading, oops, 59,000 shares, but that's a lot because the market's not opening up for another two hours. So I know that it's going to be active today. So I've already mapped this trade out for my followers. Um, I have a dark pull app where every time I map out a trade, um, I send a push notification right to your phone and you can go to the app store and download it or the Android play store and, and download it. Um, and, and here is my trade that I've already mapped out for Bank of America right here. And I'll walk you through the trade and how I mapped it out to kind of show you a little bit into my process. But one second, before we get to that, I just want to let you know that I've done all this work this morning. Yeah. I have mapped out trades um, on the S&P 500 already and sent this out because it's trading, you know, early in the morning. Um, a lot of my traders will trade pre-market. Um, and I always give levels bullish above and bearish below. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to go long if it goes above my bullish, oops, above level, 307.50. And I'm going to go short if it goes below my bearish below, 305 level. And I use um, a lot of things to figure out these levels, by the way. I use, um, let me just go to the SPY for you. I use the daily chart. All right, so the daily chart I'm, is my secret to day trading. I know most people think that you need to look at a one minute chart. I'm sure many of you watching here today go, wait, I look at a one minute. She's looking at the daily, why would you do that? I'm looking, this is my secret. I have a 90% documented success rate on these whisper of the day recommendations. And my secret is I'm looking at the daily chart. I'm looking to see where these moving averages are. All these lines on my screen are moving averages. And I'm looking for pockets. I'm looking for room where the, the chart, the stock can move up and move down. And again, I obviously can't teach you everything today in 20 minutes, but 
I've mapped out my trade um, accordingly using that going up and pretty much going down here. Another thing that I use is person's pivots. And many of you may have that as well. So hold on a minute. Just gonna show you this. All right, so we've already hit my first target, by the way. Um, let me just show you that again. So I was bullish above 307.50, um, and my first target was 308. And this was a retracement trade, um, which is against the trend, but going back up to resistance is what that means to so the eight exponential moving average on the daily chart, um, as well as this pivot here. I'm just going to zoom in. That solid line, I have solid lines and dotted lines, and you can see that it just came up and hit. See this? It hit this Camarilla pivot. And look at the volume increase. So I'm very big into volume. That is, we're trading against computers. Computers are buying and selling on every one of these lines. And this gives me a huge edge when it comes to day trading. So I'll buy at 307.51 and sell at 307.99. And there's my 50 cent trade. Now, if it goes above 308, my next trade setup is 30801 to 30852 right here on the SPY for those of you that like to trade the S&P 500. Uh, but it's, it's amazing. And then if we go below 305, below this pivot, this is, this is my trade set up to the downside going short. So I do this every single morning so that um, you guys don't have to wake up early and do it. I don't mind doing the work. This is my homework, but I do it for everything. I do it for the SPY the E-minis, the Russell, the IWM, because all of these guys have early volume and that gives me advantage. I can see where the big guys are buying and selling before the market even opens up. That's why pre-market activity is so important for day trading. Swing trading is completely different, but I do the NASDAQ futures, the oil futures and the gold futures. Um, as soon as we're done with this interview this morning, I'll finish the stocks. I've already done two of them this morning, so I can kind of share those with you guys of, of why I picked specific levels, but I'm going to just switch to Bank of America. So why am I interested in Bank of America today? Well, we had the stress test yesterday, right? So I don't care if it was good news or bad news. Um, again, I, I have no idea. I just know there's a stress test and it's going to have movement. So we're going to trade this movement today level to level. So again, I'm looking at the daily chart first. And, um, and I know there's a lot of lines and stuff going on for you guys. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So you can kind of see I've drawn some trend lines. All right, to show you where, where we're at. It's, it hasn't really been too pretty. We are below massive dark pool activity, by the way. I spotted them selling at 29 in the dark pool and recently at 2560. That was a very big dark pool level and it's at 2430. So it's pretty easy. If the trades are above us, it's bearish. If the trades are below us, we're bullish. We always just wanna follow the money, that's it. Uh, no thinking. And in my whisper, I, I actually give you all the dark pool levels right here, the recent ones. So there was um, a recent dark pool at 24.45, and we're just under that. 24.63, we're under that. And the big kahuna, the 2 million, 25.60. Right? So um, I've mapped out trades this morning. Where I'm going to be bullish, though, for a retracement trade to possibly test these dark pull prints. A lot of times they like to take it back to that level and sell more. So as a day trader, um, there are trades that we can go against the trend um, using specific levels. So I've already mapped out a trade right here, uh, 24.75 to 25.60 uh, right here. All right, this is my day trade bullish above. My bearish below is 2380 going down. Now, some people will say, well, why, why'd you pick those levels? Why not something closer? That's my no trade zone. How many of you actually have a no trade zone where if a stock is trading in between specific levels, you're just not going to touch it. 
And this is another downfall a lot of traders make. If they're not going long, they short it. If they're not shorting it, they go long. There's no rules. There's no um, mapped out, amazing, high probability trade setups for them. And, and this really is my secret too. I wait patiently for a really, really great setup. So with Bank of America, I don't want to trade it, you know, in between this. There's a lot of moving averages. Um, there's not, I like to look for these pockets, right? There's a big pocket down. Obviously the trade down is a much easier trade than the trade up. And I use a, a really uh, amazing moving average that I'm not sure if, if you guys have it on your screen. It's the eight exponential moving average. Um, on the daily chart. It's what I call the trend, uh, the trend moving average. And um, when it's a brick wall, if we're below it on the daily chart, like we are now, and we go and we hit it, there's going to be sellers there. So I'm going to be bullish above it. If we're close to it, I'm going to wait till it breaks above that brick wall. But if we're really far away from it, I might do a retracement trade to the brick wall, but I'm never going to try to break through the brick wall, okay? Because I know computers are gonna be loaded to sell wherever it is, and it's, it's, it's free. Go ahead and put it on your chart, trust me. Uh, a trader back in 2010 told me about this in my trading room. This is how I learned about it from other traders. And I'm gonna tell you the best gift he ever, ever gave me, and I share it with everybody. Um, but it's one of my favorites, it's in my book. I talk about it, but that's why I picked the level 2475 because the eight EMA is at 2469. So I picked the next price level um, above it. The market trades on in fractions, quarters, eighths, and that's where I got that 75 level and half dollars and dollar increments. Um, and so that's where I got that level from. But I also like to look again at the pivots. So just to show you a little bit separately, Here's, um, here's the pivots on Bank of America. And you're probably wondering, why did it just stop in thin air and start to move down? This is person's pivots in pink. The pink dotted line is amazing. If you don't have this, go ahead, put it on, it's free. Okay, most software has it and it's amazing. John Person was a floor trader and he, um, he developed this for Thinkorswim and a lot of the software programs have it, but it's yesterday's high, yesterday's low, and yesterday's close. You add those up, divide by three. You don't have to do that. The computer does it for us. And it's amazing because computers are programmed to sell there when we're moving up to it. All right, look at the volume, you guys. Look at this. This is so insane. I love it. Look at the volume, the big blue bar at the bottom. Yeah, computers, they moved it up. Computers selling. Don't take my word for it, I actually see it happening every single day. And so if you're gonna buy this stock, right, are you going to buy it right before it's coming up to this pink dotted line person's pivot? No, this is huge. You're gonna wait for it to break above it, except I just went a little bit higher above that eight EMA on the daily chart, because I know they're gonna be selling there too at 69, and that's why I picked that level, and this is why my success rate is so high because I'm very, very picky with my levels and how I map out these trades. And that's the most important thing. And I, you know, teach you how to do this um, if you're in my room um, and so forth. And so I'm bearish on Bank of America below 2380. Why? Because I'm looking at, at these person's pivots. This is S1 right here, this green line. I know computers are going to be buying there. If they take it down there, it's gonna bounce. So if it goes below it, that's where I wanna go short. And this is a perfect, amazing trade going all the way down to 23.44. And that's why you see me use these levels. Camarilla support, that's another pivot. I use um, Pivot Boss Camarillas. And these, the combination between these two pivots for day trading is phenomenal. So this is my secret to day trading. Now for swing trading, it's a little bit different. I use the dark pool. Yeah, I'm going for bigger moves. And I even use the dark pool for day trading as well as you, as you saw, but I use it more significantly for swing trading. And um, one little secret is, is this that I'll share with you today is we get these big prints that come in and, um, and they're very large. 
Um, in fact, I'm going to show you um, some recently on IAU. Just give me a minute. This is the dark pool favorite for gold. It doesn't matter what country you live in, right? I think everybody can trade gold, which I love. That's why I love trading gold um, and my traders love it. But this is all the dark pool activity that's been coming in this month on IAU. I don't trade IAU, it's very slow. But if you read my book as well, I, I show you examples going back years where we got big prints on IAU and gold had a massive move. And I'm gonna tell you right now, Gold is going to have a massive move. Um, this is the pattern. We have 3 million uh, that came in a couple days ago, 2.4 million yesterday, another million, 3 million, 3 million, 3 million, 3 million, 3, eight, eight, okay? This is very, very big for IAU. Um, again, we don't get so many. You could even just look at previous prints here from uh, May, March, January. There's one big one in, in, um, in April, but you can see the big difference of how much more is happening right now. So the dark pool is getting very, very heavy into gold. Um, and they're not going to move gold until they're done. Okay, that's the, and it takes them a while. So you have to be very patient. Um, sometimes it takes them a month to take their position. And I'm gonna to go to IAU for a second. Yeah, to show you this chart. So back, um, back here, you can go look on my Twitter feed. Um, back in, um, no, um, hold on a minute. It was May. Yeah, it was back here. Yeah, if you go on my Twitter feed, you can go back and look at May and June of 2019, we had the biggest dark pool prints I've ever seen in my career. And I was pretty much blasting it out everywhere I could. Um, and it took a while, I actually got hate mail because people were like, it's, it hasn't moved, Stephanie. You said there was gonna be a big move. And it just, they're not done. Every day I would show you more and more prints. They're still entering their position. They're not going to move it until they're done. Um, and you can see it had a massive, massive, massive move. It's one of our best trades. So I'm gonna tell you that we are getting very similar prints right now on it. You know, and it's between 16 and 16.78. So the, the 16 million prints happened right here. So they took it down, 16, that's a buy zone, right? And we're getting big prints at 1684. So how do we trade this? Well, if it goes above 17, yeah, I'm gonna go aggressively long on gold. If we go below 16, I'm gonna aggressively go short on gold. No thinking. What happens a lot of times is we get a splash. Yeah, when we get one large print, usually this happens, one big print. Um, it's kind of like you're throwing a big rock into a lake and it's going to splash. And it usually splashes in the opposite direction of the true intended move. For example, if they're buying the big guys, they'll move it down first and then they'll move it up big. Or if they're selling, they'll move it up first and then move it down. You'll notice that before we have a big correction, they always like to make a higher high on the, on the markets. Yeah, that's the splash and then the crash. And um, so I tell my traders, um, don't enter the first day the prints are coming in. You know, you always wanna make sure that um, you wait a couple days, unless you put on what I we talked about earlier, the strangle. That's my favorite way. Only on massive, massive prints. Again, I'm using options, they're dirt cheap because the options are not expecting a big move. So I have this big trades happening on the stock and the options are like cheap. And so we can go out like four weeks. I like to go out four weeks, sometimes a little bit longer and put on this strangle position. I buy calls out of the money and I buy puts out of the money really cheap. And I don't care about the other wrong side of the trade. I can go to zero because the right side is gonna go up a lot. And so that's my favorite way if I want to enter early or if I want to be patient, I can wait and see after the splash 
you know, which side um, they're going to go at. Um, so gold is huge. And I'll tell you another one that is going to have another big move is BBJP. Yep. Oh, by the way, I trade gold either with GDX or GLD, the gold juniors minor or, or just GLD gold. You can trade gold futures, uh, however you like to trade gold. But IAU is really slow. I would not suggest trading that, but that's just how they signal to us that they're going to be moving uh, the sector. So Japan, back back here, back in February, okay, is, this is so sneaky because nobody knows about BBJP. It's a Japan ETF that barely trades any volume. Yeah, barely. But back in February, we had these massive trades happening in my block trade indicator. And I was like, what is this? I look it up, it's Japan. And I go, and it was huge, 3 million, 2 million, every day, couple days. And I said, what is this? They're hiding it. And I put on a strangle on EWJ, which is a very popular Japan ETF that has great volume, great options. And I didn't have to know the direction. And I, we did very, very well. I did a, a webinar for Lightspeed on YouTube. You can see I put my trades in there for you. Um, but I'm going to tell you that we've just gotten even bigger prints on BBJP. They're still printing. They printed yesterday. They've been printing for like two weeks now. Two weeks. I put on a strangle going all the way to September on EWJ. Yeah, and I'm going to just show you that chart on EWJ. This is going to be even bigger. Don't ask me if they're buying or selling again. I'm, I'm not a good guesser. All right. I'm really bad at guessing. Yeah, but I'm, I just follow the prints. You don't have to, you know, don't trade off the news. This is where Japan is right now. It's very tight. You can see they're keeping it in a small space while they're entering their trade. Once they're done, if they're buying, it's going to go up massively. Or if they're selling, it's going to go down big. Remember, the market trades in the future. It's not trading in today's you know, fundamental sense of what's happening in the world. Um, and, and it's rigged and manipulated. I know it's crazy. The market is rigged and manipulated. And that's why um, so many people lose money. Um, and so this is really why I've become an educator. Um, I want to help as many people as I can to how it's rigged and manipulated and teach you how to profit off of it. And again, if I can do it, anybody can, you know, I, I didn't major, you know, I didn't major in economics. I don't even watch the news. All I do is watch the dark pool tape. And, you know, I've been doing this for 26 years. So I know what's unusual, you know, and that's what really stood out on this trade for me. Cause I was like, I've never seen BBJP what's going on there. And they've been doing this on so many different ETFs, you guys, it's ridiculous. Hiding, um, hiding, you know, they're not doing it on Apple. Guess what they're doing it on? SNDX. This is an ETF that has, you know, stocks you've heard about. Here, hold on, I put a post yesterday on it. Hold on a minute, let me just, I'll give you the top 10 holdings. I know Apple, Verizon, Microsoft, ExxonMobil, Walmart, Intel, JNJ, and CVX. These are all stocks most of you have heard of, right? So if you saw a big, massive 12 million print on it, on Apple, everybody would know and be onto it. But guess what? They were very sneaky. Look at the volume, all right? That's coming in on this. Look, this thing barely trades anything. So the only reason I know about this is I saw it on my block trade indicator and I knew it was unusual because I never see it. And so it alerted me and I looked up the ETFs and I said, okay, so I'm not gonna trade FNDX. I'm going to trade the top holdings. I've been trading Verizon, um, AT&T and XOM already. Those are my favorites. Um, and again, I'm using options which is amazing. I don't risk a lot at all. I buy these really cheap lottery tickets, I call them, which are out of the money for pennies. And, and I sell them for a lot more. Um, again, I have a huge edge. I know a big move is happening. You're never going to want to do that strategy unless you are pretty certain, like, you know, a big move 
is going to happen soon, right? And that's where the dark pool comes in. And they're being very, very sneaky. I mean, sneakier than I've ever seen them, um, but we're on to them. So they did some trades on FNDE yesterday. Uh, this is emerging markets, by the way. Look at the volume spike. See this? Nobody knows about FNDE. Everybody knows about EEM and VWO. Those are popular emerging market ETFs. Like nobody really knows about FNDE. So they're sneakily entering into it. And you know, we're in a wedge right now. Uh, let me just draw. So there are other ways you can trade it. You can trade EEM, but just wait. You have to give it a lot of time though. You have to go out. I've learned that these guys, you have to go out a couple months and you'll do very well, but you have to be a little bit patient. But just know a very big move is going to be happening um, in, in this sector. And I mean, this is really all I do all day is just watch, watch the dark pool tape and know that big moves are gonna happen. We saw big prints on Snapchat and look at this, massive. We've done really well with this. We saw massive prints coming in uh, back here. You know, if you have my dark pool app, you're in my room, I post everything up in the, uh, in the chat. Um, and then you'll see trades. Uh, let me see if I can actually just show you maybe. Um, hold on a minute. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to show you on June 4th. Yeah, I'm going to show you inside, take you inside my room. Um, oops, June 4th. Here we go. Oops. Actually, this is my calls. I put all my trades in there. Um, there was a large print that came in at 1949. Here, 3.5 million, okay, June 4th. 3.5, that's huge, okay? $19.39, June 4th. All right, so let's go back to June 4th. Look at that. And look at this move it had. Yeah, from 20 to 24. Yeah, so a lot of my traders and I, um, we put initially put on a strangle and then we added to the call side of the strangles. We've been riding it all the way up. I had the 24 calls, the 26 calls. Now I'm in the 28 calls for July 17th. And, you know, I put all my trades, um, again, you know, in this alert tab. So you can kind of see, I bought, here is, here is my call on the actual strangle. Buy to open the 24 calls. Buy to open the 15 puts. We had another massive print, 5.9 that came in. And so I exited out. I rolled into the 26 calls on June 9th. Got out of my last, another massive print. Uh, here, I bought the 18, uh, 26 calls. I added to them. Again, post every single trade I do um, in the alert tab to educate. It's really the only way, as, it, you know, as if you were sitting next to me. You know, that's, that's the only way to trade somebody. You know, you're sitting next to me and I'm walking you through the trades, explaining why I'm picking certain strikes, certain expirations, explaining why I like to scale out. Let's talk about for a minute, um, I, cause I know I probably don't have too much time left, but let's talk quickly about enteritis and exoditis. These are two psychological um, things that can happen with traders. So enteritis is people are scared to enter, right? Why are we scared to enter? Well, we might be scared to lose money on the trade. Um, and so we wait until it moves. A lot, a lot of traders do uh, to have confirmation. Oh yeah, they're buying. All right. And meanwhile, you're buying all the way up here and you should have bought down here. And then there's exoditis. Exoditis is when we get out and the stock keeps going without us. So I have had both of those happen to me, of course. Exoditis was severely worse. I had it for years. And I developed a system to cure myself, which is scaling and rolling. So I scale. So if I buy options for 10 cents and I sell them for 30, because I don't want to go to sleep at night going, well, what if it reverses? Then I just lost all my profit, right? So if I bought 20 contracts at 10 and I sold, um, you know, half when it went to 30 cents i'm taking my profit in that's scaling and then the next day maybe it goes to 40 cents and i sell another quarter 
and I don't want to risk that. Um, so I sell the last quarter, but I still want to stay in the position. So what I do is I buy cheaper calls that are um, further out of the money for like 10 cents again. So this way, if it goes down, this is exactly what I've been doing with Snap. If it goes down, guess what? I'm only risking 10 cents, but I'm not doing 20 contracts. Now I'm only doing 10 or half or a quarter. So I'm still in the trade, but my risk is a lot less. And you know, this is stuff that I'm constantly doing and teaching in my room. Um, but enteritis can easily be cured learning how to do options because you know, stocks could be scary. I was a stock trader for 22 years. So I know that um, stock trading could be, um, could be very, very scary. What if you go out and you put $100,000 into a stock trade and, and you, you're on the wrong side? Well, that's a lot of money that you can lose. And this is why I love putting on these like lottery ticket trades or these strangle trades because it's just, I never have enteritis anymore. I'm like, what's the big deal? They're seven cents. They're not expecting a big move. And the next day news comes out always or the next couple of days and the stock gaps up big or gaps down big. And I can't tell you how many times this has happened, but you know, tremendous amount. So it's, you know, with trading or any other career, you have to have an edge and you have to watch somebody successful doing it over and over and over again. There's a rhythm to the market and you just really have to learn, you know, how to do that. So um, I don't know if, if we have much time. Do you guys want me to, to stop? Because I just could keep talking all day. <laughs> you have to actually tell me to stop. All right. I think we'll take a few questions from the guys in the webinar. Sure. Do you want me to stop sharing my screen? How do we do that? No, you can leave it open. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right. Go ahead. All right. Thank you so much, Stephanie. So I'd like to open up the floor to any questions. And uh, so far, I can see that there are two questions. Uh, one gentleman called Tom is asking how to join your trading and training webinar classes, if you do have. Or um, if you don't have the webinar classes, then how to join your trading room. Sure. Great, great question. So my trading room is a pretty advanced trading room. Um, you can't just come in and, and do a trial or come in for a month. People have to be trained personally by me first. I have to make sure I teach you everything. So I, I teach a class called boot camp, which is 70 hours of live trading. I'm on the microphone all day long. I'm showing you my whole process. I showed you a little glimpse into it this morning, but we do it for, we map out all the trades in the morning and then we um, go into live trading. I get you into the trades and I get you out. I tell you when to get out and I see who can do it, who could follow the rules, who has a problem like getting stopped out. The traders post in the chat box um, when they're getting out so I can see what they're doing. And we do day trading, overnight swing trading. Um, we do futures, options, stocks, everything. So you have to take this class first before coming into the room, the Java pit. We do have packages. Um, you can email me, Stephanie with an F, S-T-E-F-A-N-I-E, at the stock whisperer. Dot com. You can also check out the bootcamp class on the dark pools website, the darkpools.com. Go and you can see the bootcamp. So that's, that's how you get into my trading room. But we do have a training pit, which is really great place for traders to start. It's a newbie trading room and you can access that. You can sign on yourself. Um, if you go to the darkpools.com and that's really for new traders to learn how to get their software set up, start learning about the dark pool, start learning about options. Um, it's really, really great place. And that's a month to month basis um, that, that anybody can join. Thank you so much for that. Uh, there's uh, someone else called Samuel who's asking about how you're able to tell uh, when the market is going to move the most. Yeah, so when, yeah I, I believe I did answer that though. Um, is there a second part to that question? No, or, uh, the, the rest is just how to join the trading room, but uh, mostly just okay. to explain how you identify those setups. Yeah, so this is where the experience comes in, is when you see very low dark pool activity, I mean, all of a sudden it gets really heavy, I know we're going to have a big move. 
And, and that's really, it, it doesn't take long to learn that. This is what I point out to you. I show it to you every day. Um, and if you have my dark pool app, you know, anybody can go and get that at the Apple store or it's, it's $19.99 a month. Um, I do the work or Google Play Store. I do the work for you and I send out push notifications all day long on unusual dark pool activity. But you have to know how to trade, you know, and that's the problem that can happen is people have this information, but they don't know how to trade properly. So it's really important, you know, that you do learn and, and get it an education. Thank you. There is a gentleman called Joseph who is asking about the training fee for your boot camp. Yeah, so the boot camp is $34.99 uh, for two weeks, and it's 70 hours of all live trading, and it's recorded as well. If you can't attend live, it's recorded as well, um, and you get all the recordings. They're yours forever, and again, it's 70 hours. Of, we have one week on, one week off, and one week on, and it starts August 3rd. I only do this class four times a year. So August 3rd is my next one, and the one after that is in November. All right, thank you. Uh, then I had my own personal questions. What's your take on penny stocks? Because I remember you said that you don't trade the, the small, mm -hmm. small caps. What about uh, penny stocks? What's your opinion nope. on them? No, and I like to buy. No, don't do it. Please don't do it. Please. It's, uh, that's the first rule. Uh, Scotty, my boss, literally, 1994. He turns to me, Stephanie, don't trade anything under $5. I mean, and I'm telling you, I've seen people get wiped that you have to get lucky trading a penny stock. There's a lot of people that, that push these stocks. They're in it. They push it to all their subscribers, right? They push it up and they end up selling it and all their subscribers end up getting toasted. Yeah, it's a pump and dump a lot of times. Um, Again, the dark pool doesn't trade there. So I only trade where Goldman Sachs is trading. You know, he's the guy that makes money no matter what the market does, right? Remember back in 2008, he got in big trouble because he shorted the market. Yeah, and people weren't happy with that. Well, we saw them selling, you know, we always do. And so again, that's, I please don't, you know, please don't trade penny stocks, don't trade biotech stocks. These are all very dangerous things to trade. You can get lucky, but I have seen people get wiped out completely. All right, thank you, thank you for that. It's not the first time I've had that, so it's good to, to get that confirmation. Yes. <laughs> then, uh, then what about mid-cap stocks? Um, and also, so that you didn't mention the Dow, whether you trade the Dow Jones. Yeah, so I don't, I don't personally trade the Dow, but I'm gonna give you a little um, clue though when we're gonna get a big move in the market. So we get these late, uh, these late prints that come in. They, and the way they do that is Goldman Sachs does a trade from their London desk and they cross the trade with their New York desk. And they don't have to report these trades until um, 24 hours later. So we mostly get them on the SPY and the Russell and the Qs. But when we get a couple on the DIA, which is the Dow Jones, um, ETF, that's, that's like their signature. It's like a secret code that we're going to have a big move. All of a sudden we get one or two of them. The other day we actually, we got quite a few of them. Um, hold on a minute. I'm just going to look at my, um, I just want to see what day it was. Yeah. June 11th, we got pretty heavy prints on it. Mm -hmm. Look at this. This is crazy. I'm going to show you something. Still see my screen. Yep. So we keep track. This is the DIA and these are the late prints that we get. And you can see that this is the shares. It's usually pretty low. We got maybe one, a couple, but look at this day. 1.9 million. These are late sell prints. They did them in, in London. They didn't show us till the next day. All right. 1.9 million at 270. And this is June 11th. It got very heavy there. So it was heavy on, on May 13th and heavy on June 11th. So if we look at the chart, okay, May 13th was the bottom, they were buying, and June 11th was the top. Look at that on the DIA, isn't that cool? It's really mm -hmm. not difficult. I just, and again, uh, 
this is the pattern that we see. This is just years of experience watching this stuff. That's how we know they're up to something. All right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Then uh, two last questions just before we end. Um, there's a gentleman called Joseph who's asking about your book and um, can we be able to get it a PDF version over the internet, hard copy and also soft copy where to get your books? Yeah, so this is, this is my book. So my book, unfortunately, Dark Pool Secrets um, is not available on PDF, um, but we do ship. I personally will ship you a copy, an autographed copy. If you go to the darkpools.com website, the darkpools.com, and you'll see the book there uh, for $49.99. I will ship it anywhere in the world uh, to you, an autographed copy. Um, we, my marketing team ships it only in the US. Um, but if there's anybody outside, you can go to the dark, darkpoolsecrets.com website if you live in the US and, and get a free book, just pay for shipping. Um, however, if you're outside of the U S we, we will personally go to the post office and, and yeah, and ship you a copy. We do have a lot of people outside the U S unfortunately we don't have a PDF version right now, but I do have a lot of workshops. If you want to learn about the dark pool, you know, on my website, um, there are videos you can download and, and stuff. And I have tons of videos on YouTube that you can watch right. as well. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, do we still have uh, do we still have some time for one more already? Yeah, you can ask. Uh, so maybe one more question, and this is to do with the ETFs. Is it okay if you could just uh, explain a little bit about ETFs to the audience, so that they can understand how you sure. use them and especially why you use them for for your trading? Yeah, sure. So I I I use them a few different ways. Um, so what ETFs are is it's a basket of stocks. So for long-term investors, if you, let's just say you want to buy a piece, like I showed you that FN uh, DF, right? That was an ETF that has all those big companies, Apple, Microsoft, um, Verizon. Instead of buying each individual stock, you could buy a basket of them you know, just buying one ETF or buying the SPY. The SPY is the biggest ETF out there. And that's why the dark pool loves the SPY. But they also do love to trade, you know, um, a lot of other ETFs. Um, I personally really like to trade individual stocks. Yeah, when I see dark pool activity on a specific stock, it makes it easier for me because sometimes an ETF, one stock will go up in the basket and one will go down and the ETF won't go anywhere. So for me, I would rather pick an individual stock to do an option trade off the dark pool. But for long-term investing, you know, perhaps you would, you would prefer an ETF over an individual stock because what if you pick Apple and oh boy, Apple had a really bad decade, but all the other stocks in that ETF performed well so therefore, you're, you're going to do better in the long run. There was some discrepancy during that big crash in 2008 where ETFs got really killed. There was nobody on, on the bid. And yeah, a lot of them went like almost to zero before bouncing. And you know, very scary um, that there was a lot of complaints about them. Um, another way I trade ETFs is earning season. So for example, a trade that I put on a couple weeks ago was I strangled XLF, which is a financial ETF. And I do this trade a lot before earnings season. Um, I strangled it and I like to do it about a month before earnings because we get a lot of, there's a lot of dark pool activity, number one, that's why I did it. Uh, number two, it has all the major banks in it. Um, and so I didn't have to like pick a specific bank and it wasn't expecting a big move. So therefore I, I strangled it and did very, very well. Um, but a lot of times I'll hold it into earnings season as well, but you have to be careful. You have to make sure that they're not expecting a big move. The IV, the implied volatility is low. Um, and again, this is, this is just all stuff that I, that I teach live. It's really the only way. All right, Stephanie, we thank you, thank you so much for your presentation, your time. Maybe as we conclude, you can tell us who your trading idol is. And besides <laughs> the dark pool secrets, which other trading book on stocks and options would you recommend to us? 
Yeah, so am I a trading idol? The first day I was on the job as an assistant, um, I asked my boss, what book should I read? Because I didn't know anything about trading, really, zero. And he said, hands down, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator by Edwin Lefebvre. And it's the story of Jesse Livermore. And Jesse Livermore, he's my idol. I mean, this, is, this book was published in 1923. And, and nothing has changed. I've highlighted it. I have it on my desk. Um, it's my favorite, fa it's my trading Bible. And there's so many things in this book that Jesse taught me. He's dead. He's been dead for a long time. And I learned how to trade through a dead man, which is pretty cool because it's just things haven't changed. He goes into psychology. He had a rough life, but yeah, he is definitely, um, definitely my hero for sure. Um, and so I didn't get the second part of your question was option, which options? Is that what you said? The book on any book besides the dark pool secrets. Oh, yes. Book. Yeah. So that's, that's really it. I'll be honest with you. I've read some other books, uh, Market Wizards, um, and, and nothing really compared to this book as far as a tape reading book. And this is what I do. He teaches you, you know, this, this guy, Jesse, used to get kicked out of the bucket shops. Back then, you had to go into a bucket shop to trade. And he was so good at reading the tape that they kicked him out. They would not let him trade there anymore. They had his picture up on the wall. And if he ever came in, kick him out, he had to go from town to town. Could you imagine, like, you're with Thinkorswim, and they call you up, and they go, well, John, you can't trade anymore because you're too good. I mean, that's what happened to him. And so I just, I learned so much about tape reading. I can't stress enough. Um, and you can get the PDF version of that book. So definitely go ahead and, and read Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. Hands down, best trading book. All right. Uh, I think you have already mentioned your website and how people can access your book. So yes. we, we really thank you for your time, Stephanie. We look forward to having you again in the future on the lounge and... Thank you. And oh, you're so welcome. Yeah, you, you are so welcome. Time. Yeah, hope you guys learned something today. Have a yeah. great, yeah, have a great weekend, and please stay safe. You too. Yeah. Bye. You too. All right. All right. Bye, bye, guys. All right. Bye. Thanks, guys, for tuning in and sticking with us to the end. We hope you have learned something new. I would like to appreciate Scope Markets for sponsoring this webinar. Remember, you can open a live trading account with Scope Markets and apply the lessons shared by the guest in this webinar to your trading. Many thanks to our guests for speaking to us. We'll be open to have you in the future. Till next time, goodbye.